Hey friends, it's John from Lamazne Consulting, and I'm here today to talk with you about what I love about Inkscape. I love to share what I know about technology in a highly accessible way, and I work with people every day to do great things together. I want to talk with people about technology, branding, design, teaching, and lots of other topics that are related to those things. So if you'd like to talk with me, please visit lamazne.com and contact me. Thanks. Inkscape is an amazing open source application that I use every day in order to do all of the graphic design and illustration, logo work, really anything where I want to have control over graphic lines in an application. I use it all the time in order to help people with branding, I help them to understand how color affects the way that people interpret their brand, and I use it anytime I really have something that I just have in my mind and I want to be able to get it down on paper. I'm going to show you an example of how I have used Inkscape in the past in order to work on something like this. There's my tattoo and in fact I used Inkscape in order to design it and I'm going to show you how I'm going to design one of my future tattoos using my voice. I'll explain in the video. Now let's get to it. Hey everybody so here is Inkscape. All I did was I went to my applications menu inside of the beautiful Ubuntu Studio. I went into graphic design where I have Inkscape installed and I went ahead and opened it up. Uh, if you installed on Windows it would be installed in your uh, menus just the same way as your other applications. If you installed on Mac OS it would be in your applications folder and so on. But uh, I highly recommend, if you are a graphic designer or artist, uh, to consider Ubuntu Studio because it's a free operating system that does a great job of giving you the right tools for creating. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to uh, create a waveform tattoo. And we could do something uh, crazy. You know, we could use the splotchy brush and uh, make a whole bunch of splotches on top of one another in some form that ends up looking like a waveform. Uh, or we could take a waveform picture that we find on the internet somewhere. You know, let's say that we uh, did a search on waveform. and then go to images. Uh, isn't this funny? If you do a search on waveform in Google, one of my images is the first image to show up. It's this one here. And this is a waveform of me saying the word open. This waveform is uh, me saying open. So, uh, we're going to make this and we're going to use a waveform that we create right now using more open source software. So I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to minimize Inkscape for the moment. I'm going to go into Applications Audio Production and I'm going to open up Audacity which is an open source free tool for recording audio. And I'm not sure how this is going to work with my screencasting application, but I'm going to try to record myself right now. And I'm going to say open. 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 Okay. So this is a tool that allows me to, for example, see a spectrogram or a waveform or a uh, pitch set. I'm going to look at waveform. And uh, here is me saying open. I'm going to zoom in to that. And you're going to see that um, I want it to be something like that. And I can also, let's see, make this uh, 
I'll split stereo to mono, and then I can take just that one, like that, that. And now I'm going to use a tool, oh, accessories, <clears throat> screenshot. And it's going to ask me, what do I want to record? Do I want to record entire screen, active region, or select a region? Uh, so I'm going to say select a region. And I'm going to say, OK. It's going to ask me to select a portion. I'm going to select my portion like that. It gives me the opportunity to save. And I'm going to say, OK, and I'll save to, let's say, save it to instructional videos, waveform tattoos, save, and I'll minimize that. And now I open up Inkscape and import that. Now I'll get to that same place. I'm going to embed rather than link. That means it's going to be a part of this SVG file as opposed to a link to an external file. And there it is. And I'm going to try to work this into a square space, meaning I'm going to have this square be my background. So I'll make that nice gray send that to the bottom. And now I'm going to take my uh, waveform and I'm going to, while it is selected, go into Path Trace Bitmap. And what that's going to do is give me this Trace Bitmap dialog. I'm going to do a brightness cutoff and do an update. I'm going to turn this up, do another update. That might be the one, so I'll say like that. OK. And now what I have is the original image that I used, which I can set aside now, set down. And my waveform of me saying the word open. And uh, because this is now a path, what I did was I created a, a vector-based path as opposed to this uh, bitmap-based image. This bitmap-based image cannot be manipulated very easily without destroying the image, uh, at least not in my opinion, not as easily as this. This, I can go in, and if I wanted to change any part of it, I can go in now and select a point and move it up. I can also select a bunch of points and get rid of them. <coughs> Excuse me. Like that. Go to the other side. Select these. Get rid of them. Anytime I want to go back to full view, I just hit 5 on my keyboard. That gives me my page view. Now that this is a vector-based shape, of course, I can change the color, too. I can make this, let's say, a bright blue. I can duplicate this, make the duplicate a dark blue, and size it up a bit. Uh, that was a Control-Shift-Plus. Control-Shift-Plus allows me to do an outset like this. So now I can take that outset shape and move it down using the lower selection tool. You can see the effect that that has. It gives it a very electric effect. Uh, not that this is especially good for our purposes because we want it for a tattoo. So we really want a nice white background. We're going to get rid of this uh, darker blue background. Moving this out of the way, deleting that one, moving this back. I probably want this to be as dark as possible. Now, uh, you will have to speak with your tattoo artist in order to determine whether or not this is enough information uh, to create a reasonable facsimile on your arm or your leg or whatever. It's going to be 
dependent on how much space you have on your arm to do this work and how big your arm is. So for example, if my arm is thinner, if I wanted to do the inside of my arm, for example, I might do something like this. And if I wanted to do something across my back, I might want to do something like that down my back. Right? Uh, my, this is going to go on my inside left arm, probably. And so I want it to be something like this. And I also don't want this hard, pointy end. Uh, what I want is for it to uh, start dark in the center. Like I can select that point and make it black. I can select this point and make it white. And select this point and make it white. Right? And you can see how that's creating a uh, faded effect. So what I'm going to do here is create a fourth So th this is what I would take to my artist and say, this is what I would like to see on my arm. Can you take care of that? And they may say, oh, it needs to be thicker than that. I need to get out of that. So anyway, this is part of the reason that I love Inkscape. Let me, uh, while we're here, give you a few more uh, things to know about this. If you wanted to add text, you can click in and add text. Uh, and text is indeed text. In other words, if I had a typo in this, I could go ahead and edit it or change it. But I can also take text and convert it from text to what's called a path. If we say path, object, path. And what happens now is that this H becomes editable because it's no longer an H, it is just a series of shapes that looks like an H. And you can make your own topography, and you can have a great deal of fun using this free, great tool. Once you have objects in vector format, you can apply colors to them, you can apply gradients to go from one color to another. You can still use images inside of Inkscape. You saw how we uh, imported this image here. And this is still an image. We can still use it. We can put that text on top of that image and we can use that image for our logo or whatever. But if we want to make a change to this image, this is not the best tool for a change to a photographic image like that, one that's made up of uh, bitmaps. Um, and pixels. The, the best tool for something like that is the GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program, or some other image-based editing application. As opposed to Inkscape, which is really about editing these vector points. So anytime I do logo work, anytime I need to do really precise graphic work, this is the tool that I use. I hope you enjoyed this as a demonstration of what Inkscape can do. And uh, if you have any questions about Inkscape, certainly ask me. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out until this point. If you did hang out this long, you probably liked the video. If you like what you see here and you want to see more, give me a thumbs up to let me know that you liked it. And go ahead and subscribe in order to see more videos like this one. I really love Inkscape, and I love sharing ideas about Inkscape with you. We can help each other every day if we try. This is the way that I'm trying to help you. Thanks, friends. This is John from Lamazny Consulting. If there's anything that I can help you with, please don't hesitate to contact me at lamazny.com. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.